All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWest 3 Raw TV. Today, a very special guest, Milo Sarshev. Milo, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been a long time coming. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Thank you. Well, Jerry, yeah, I responded to you right away. I would do it. You know that I'm super busy, but uh, I'm going to take the time because it's important. I mean, first, you and I never talked. Uh, I know that you're very knowledgeable and uh, we see eye to eye uh, many times. And then recently I've seen the video that you posted, like, you know, is not lying, right? Because that was like one of those first examples of you actually had my handwriting yeah. from somebody and I don't know who, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the whole idea that uh, I tried to express a zillion times is why would I try to lie and misinform, right? Uh, you know, people the, like, let's go getbig.com. I don't know if you follow since then. Uh, there was this crazy guy, GH15 yeah, or whatever else back in the day. Well. And he was uh, writing so many suicidal, uh, the, 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 the cycles, right? And yeah. suggesting to the people that I actually went online on the Get Big and I said, like, listen, don't listen to this idiot. Here it is. This is Olympia cycle. And I posted something, you know, very much uh, to what you uh, read, or, you know, that time. So uh, you approached me, uh, and this is what I want people to understand. You're seriously concerned about uh, youngsters and about people uh, that maybe uh, being directed in a wrong direction, right? Yeah, so explain a little bit so you can touch all the subjects. So, uh, yeah, so basically, you know, I've been doing this, this is uh, 30 years I've been doing this. And I came up around the time where, of course, you were competing. You were one of the guys that I looked up to. And, you know, we didn't really know because it was very taboo. So people didn't talk about it. But eventually you would learn because you get in with the people at the gym after you've been training long enough. And they saw you putting in the effort and you're serious about it. Then eventually they would talk to you about it and people would direct you. But it was a lot, a lot different than it is now. Right. Like you mentioned GH15. Now, you know, I had never seen anything like those cycles. And I had been around, of course, for a while. And. And my biggest, I was 5'9", 273. I mean, I was using everything that everybody was using, but it still wasn't what he was talking about. And, you know, I, 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 back then, already, I was kind of like, what, are they really doing that? And, you know, of course, I'm good friends with a lot of the pros, and all of them were just like, look, no, that's not what we do, and, you know, it's really not what we do. And uh, I, I, he kind of phased out a little bit. But now we have this new wave of people that are coming out on YouTube, and they're saying things, and I'm like, this is just wrong. It's just wrong, you know? And that's when I said, you know, I had these documents – I call them the Milos documents. And what happened was I had a, a friend of mine, she was dating a pro and you were working with him and you had written all these documents for him. And when they split up, he, he moved out. And what happened was he was like, I already got a copy of him. And he's like, you can just throw them out. Well, she looked at him and saw some things about diet and she didn't really understand the other stuff. She goes, would you want these? You might, you might help me with your diet. And I said, if it's from Milos, I'll take it. So I went over to her house and got it. And lo and behold, it had the diet, it had how to use insulin. You drew little graphs. It had the, I mean, the cycles, everything. And I was like, okay, this is what they're really doing because this is Milos. Now, I had also understood that you were helping a lot of guys back then with their diet, nutrition, drug cycle, all stuff like that. There was, I don't know if it was you or NASA, they called the insulin wizard. Like somebody called somebody the insulin wizard back then because you guys were the first ones to really start using that stuff back in well, the day. Well, you want me to tell you a story about that very quickly? Insulin, you know, sure. so, because <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, and you probably heard, and, and many people you get bored with my stories, but the, uh, Nasser somebody is uh, Yugoslavian. His mother was uh, from Yugoslavia, father from Egypt. He competed in Yugoslavian championship with me, you know, back in uh, 85. He won overall. I was second in, in my class and stuff. Uh, then uh, um, he started competing before me as a, as a pro, I think 1990, and I started 91. So um, when I started competing, I was beating him 91, 92, 93, right? And uh, then he came to me on a, in a FIBO show once. And he said, okay, would you tell me what you're doing? So I literally sit down for two hours, explain everything in a great detail. Honestly, I mean, I would not spend a minute lying to somebody. I mean, come on. I see uh, you can wake me up in the middle of the night, any part of the year, anywhere in the, in the world, I would tell you always the same thing. Either I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you, this is how it goes. Right. So I explained him everything to a T. Then uh, 94, he competed at Olympia and uh, immediately moved to San Diego and I invited him as a guest. And I had a, I didn't uh, bring the journals. I don't know. I just moved to this house. I had those journals. You probably saw it. I had the journals from 1987. Every year I would write down every little 
milligram and gram macros and uh, micros, right? <laughs> uh, so uh, he was there on, on a table and when he came in, so what is this? And then he opened and, uh, you know, so he was like, saying something in German to uh, his wife, uh, Bidget. And, uh, you know, so I said, Nasser, this is exactly what I told you, you know, is it? And he is again speaking German. He's not responding to me. So finally, his wife, actually Birgit, Bissera, uh, he, he changed her name into Yugoslavian name. He is, uh, uh, in Emilos, Nasser did exactly the opposite. Uh, say, excuse me? So 93, when I told him how to use insulin, GH, which cycle to uh, actually use, how much to use, he didn't want to believe uh, a word that I was saying because I compete against him. So he would think, because that was kind of his personality, he would misinform you. So to, to, to basically, you know, give you the bad info, kind of what Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger was saying about uh, Colombo, right? Uh, I'm his father, right? So <laughs> if he comes to me for advice and we compete, I'll give him the wrong advice. Right. I would never do that. But to make long story short, he goes, okay, can I take this journalist home? So let's go. And he took like my couple of years, you know, and uh, uh, there was that famous thing like, oh, you're eating 500 grams of protein? Uh, yeah. How much are you eating? 250. I said, Nasser, for the love of God, he yeah, so, so much bigger guy. Protein is the only uh, building macronutrient. You know, you can take uh, all the energy you want. You know, that doesn't matter what you yeah. need is building blocks for you know, so if I did 500, he went 600, right? Uh, to make uh, that story shorter, January 95, we started training together. We, we were training partners. He went on my insulin protocol. He exploded like nobody I have ever seen in my life. I mean, I say this story about uh, uh, Flex Wheeler, which really transformed in 2003. Maybe I can touch that subject too. But uh, Nasser, on ins and, and first, I was going to tell you, first when he goes, uh, uh, oh, you're using insulin, you know, insulin just made me fat, so, you know, I never wanted to use it. I said, Nasser, if you use it wrongly, 100% for sure is going to make you fat. That's why diabetics are fat. You know, insulin is not selective, it's going to store everything. So if you don't time it properly, you have a wrong diet, you know, it's triglycerides, lingering around, it's going to store 100%. You can avoid it. It can be intermuscular triglyceride, but regardless, it's going to be stored. Yeah. So uh, 95 January, we started. Uh, he went to like 310 pounds, pretty much contest ready. I mean, it's that's, uh, we're talking 1995, right? It's yeah. like, uh, it was unthinkable. But anybody that can see 94 Olympia, Nasser, and 95 Night of the Champions in Houston, which was five months later, they're not gonna believe the difference. Uh, at that time, right, he was looking at my cycles. And uh, again, so he didn't really believe that these are the cycles, right? Because- He thought you gave him kinda, big notebooks. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they would wanna always believe, right, that there is more to it. And right. that's GH15, I don't know, this new wave of, uh, you know, I'm gonna call them idiots that suggests, uh, you know, so high. Uh, okay, let's look at from the perspective. If I'm a drug dealer and I tell you that uh, uh, Dorian was using three parabola a week, yep. 76 milligrams, right? Uh, or I tell you 2,500 milligrams, uh, what is better? You know, I want to sell 2,500 milligrams, not 200, right? So that's how this all started. And this is when I jump in to say, please think about it. But not to digress too much. Here is how it is, because you said you found out from some people in the industry, right? And we constantly have that bro science, pro medical science. Number one, no medical doctor or medical science to this day, right? Did any clinical studies on use of anabolic steroids for athletes or for bodybuilders especially, right? right? So yeah. there's no such a thing. So they're gonna start the bro science. Well, listen, yeah. When I came to uh, America in 1987 to compete at the uh, universe, I was drug free. I was convinced that Arnold Schwarzenegger is 
drug free because I've seen in the magazine and there was a picture the crazy bicep shot right black and white when he looked like a freak it's no steroids so I really went to the states thinking this is the it this is it but then I said I, I lost you know so many shows and I, I realized oh my god I'm here to make a living from bodybuilding I either do what big boys do or I don't you just like get uh, general knowledge of oh steroids are not healthy it's dangerous and all this stuff right uh, when I talked to my family all medical doctors initially right away stay away from steroids hormones you're gonna you know create hormonal chaos you know disbalance and you're never gonna you know come back to normal so of course I was kind of careful but uh, as we started right you uh, in 1980s for me right 87 i was very very careful i said okay i don't want to destroy my health but i want to enhance my anabolism protein synthesis you know the uh, reduce the degradation and this compound and this compound yeah it would make sense and there was like literally minimal amounts this is how we started and if you get anybody on interview from 1980s from Lee Haney, uh, Barry DeMay, you know, these guys, uh, Rich Gaspari, they're gonna tell you, I mean, their, their cycles were probably one fifth of a regular cycle nowadays. And now, and I read in your, um, you know, in your documents, which you said minimum of 12 weeks to go off, right? Yeah. And this is another topic that, this is one of the reasons why I hit you up now, because there's yeah. a topic going on that one of these YouTubers said, it's safer just to stay on the drugs than to come off. Now. I, I've heard that in the past from people that wanted to stay on and they tricked themselves into saying, well, I think it's less on the body to stay on. You guys always came off, right? One million percent. Okay. Uh, now I remember that was like major thing you want to discuss. So yeah. sorry that I digressed, but, but here it is. Oh, I love hearing it all. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I'm sure. And uh, I'm sure other people as well. I was with uh, Danny Jim on the podcast with who was it? Flex Wheeler, Chris Kermier, uh, Tony Freeman. For us, off meant off. PCT meant PCT without any bridging, without uh, you know any of those. Uh, when I was uh, general rule, rule of thumb, if I would be ten weeks on, minimum five weeks off, and if I can stretch it, I would stretch it. Twelve weeks, six weeks off. Sixteen weeks, eight weeks off. You know this is kind of thing. Of course. Uh, you can imagine I competed 110 times. So it's, it was all experiment for me first, okay, before I started sharing knowledge with the other guys, when I felt very secure and safe. And before I conclude the, that story, I'm going to tell you, uh, 58 years old, used uh, for 33 years steroids, okay? I never had a single side effect that I would tell you, Oh, I was concerned. I didn't feel good. Affected me this way, that way. You know, the only thing that happened to me was that Sintel injection. There was a wrong yeah. administration by my ex. You know, uh, this is a different story. But now, and this is maybe uh, information that not too many people would want to hear it. But I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say it again. I didn't have a single regret ever of using it, right? And I would advise my whole family, my friends, okay? Anabolic steroids, as I said in a, a generation, I had an interview, uh, medicaments, medicaments, okay? To promote constructive metabolism, not destructive. So if you just erase every possible information right now, and I tell you, there is a group of medicaments that promote constructive metabolism. They are given to the critically catabolic patients, dying, burnt, injured, recall the center after the right. surgeries, you know, uh, HIV, cachexia, boo. So they are dying and who they revive. Oh, so it's just focus on it. Is this good or bad? Oh my God. Right. It's constructive metabolism. Good. Now, when we talk about doping, right? Back in the 70s and 80s, if you read about anabolic steroids, you would read 
oh, the, the, they don't improve the performance. They don't do jack shit, you know, all this my fucking doctor mic. told me that before I went on. My yeah. doctor said, I don't know why they don't work. I went from 173 pounds <laughs> to 230 in 10 weeks, and he couldn't believe it. And he was a medical doctor. Uh, yeah, so he actually, when he told you, he actually believed. Yeah. You know, uh, he actually believed. So, you know, slam dunk, you prove him. But, but listen, I understand from ethical standpoint, of uh, you know, Vada, USADA, Olympic Games, all this. Whoever is using doping is physically superior, bigger, stronger, faster, recuperate different, you know. So it is for sure, yeah, it's superior. But let's, I never talked about this, you know, before, but let's talk about it, uh, this. Any athlete in any sport that wants to reach the uh, highest level, they want to, maximize everything right maximize training stimulus recovery supplementation nutrition maximizing everything and for bodybuilders that one more step was okay you know using anabolic drugs right so for me going for mr universe and later to go to mr olympia there was no brainer i have to take it but now i have to truly understand what maximizes right what amount of any medication is, you know, you can take one aspirin or ibuprofen, or you can take 100 and uh, what is gonna be? 100 is gonna be 100 times better, uh, yeah. hell no, okay? So with the steroids, uh, I tell you, uh, it's a, such a low dosage that anybody uh, coming for the first time, okay, using it should be used and they're gonna explode. Right. And, and like you said, you gain what, 30 something pounds? And that was off of one cc of testosterone. And I did that for 10 weeks. And in the middle, I bridged up to two cc's for two weeks then tapered back down. And by the time we were done, I was 60 pounds heavier. Like everybody in the gym was freaking out because we had these little um, Pulfajefo omnidrins that were like two years out of date. So they weren't even super potent, but it was 250 milligrams. I was 20, uh, 20 years old and my body just blew up. And they were like, how much? Like, and I was like, I'm just taking that one thing. And they couldn't believe it. Yes. You see, this is real life story. So whoever is listening to this, you're going to say, oh, Jerry and me are full of shit and all this stuff. <laughs> Why would we talk about this? I mean, seriously. So anybody getting on a juice should be the absolute minimal dosage. You know, okay. They should research a little bit and see. I, I have a guy, okay, um, 18, 19 years old, right? And say, so I want to start. I want to start. Said, How long are you training? Oh, almost two years. I said, for the love of God, you're a teenager. Yeah. You're training only for two years. You don't deserve, you didn't earn the right to use it. You know, so wait. Absolutely. But but nowadays, when some of the other people go in the gym and they was, uh, already next month, they're using it. And then they have this notion that you just mentioned, it's better to stay on all the time, right? And then they heard they should be using so much more and then they get into trouble. Okay, so as you were saying, the only uh, logical reason when those people say stay on it, don't get off of it, is if you are on super high dosage, right? You suppress your endogenous uh, hormone production, right? And then you just you know drop off, and you maybe don't even do PCT, right? And then you plummet down, and you go in depression and all kinds of stuff, right? these kind of things. But why would you ever go? this direction that's the wrong direction to begin with so uh i always did the pct in between my cycles i always went on acg and clomid uh, this was uh you know a must um uh, not touching this person like now uh if you see some of my programs i'm going to tell you for sure my programs are circulating around and then sometimes you're going to see uh, my athlete's PCT, but he's still using 125 milligrams twice a week, right, of testosterone. Well, yeah, but that guy, uh, when I started working with uh, with him, was in crazy cycle that first I reduced it. And even when I re reduced it, I wasn't comfortable really shutting him down because it's like, you know, these kind of things. Uh, let me wait. Next cycle is going to be moderate and next PCT can be without it. And then never, ever, is gonna touch it again. So the goal uh, is even if you're on high dosage, just to get to a point where you can come off, 
use yeah. the PCT so that you're totally off before you go back on. And people don't understand if they come off those drugs for a certain period of time, they can go back on low dosages and they'll work better. Yeah. Oh, they didn't this, realize uh, that. Yeah, they, this is a major thing. And listen, uh, again, unfortunately, see, back in the 80s and uh, 90s, especially early 90s, none of us, I mean, the final one guy from, from Dorian to Nasser for uh, Kevin Flex, uh, Ronnie, Sean, Lee Priest. I mean, I guarantee you, uh, and, and uh, see their cycles, you would laugh. I mean, and that's laugh. I, I hear that all the time. Yeah, you laugh. Yeah. And none of us was on forever. You know, all of us had a long time off. I mean, Kevin, Sean, Sean Ray did a six months off. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie did, I don't know, three, four months. Kevin got, you know, this is how it was. For somebody that uh, competed like I did, I competed throughout the year. I had to time so many weeks I can be on and then I have to have uh, this much time off so I can go a little bit on for my next one and stuff like that. There was February, Iron Man, uh, March, Armor Classic. Then there was uh, Night of Champions, Pittsburgh, Niagara Falls, you know, May, and then there was September. So this is what I was doing, but my whole intention always was maximize in the healthiest possible way. So just to uh, you know, make a point of what you're saying, everybody is listening. That somebody is brainwashing and telling you, you should be on constantly, okay? Uh, you are prescribing a disaster, guarantee. And it's not a matter of if it's gonna happen, it just when it's going to happen. You cannot be on the cycle and the bridging and then back on the cycle and bridging and then back on the cycle, especially if you're in your 20s. What is going to happen? What, you're going to be forever for 30s, 40s, 50s, and uh, I'm almost 60 right now? That, for when me... You say, when you say bridging, you mean like the blast and cruise. We're using a little bit in between? Yes. That's the so, bridging, right? Yeah, I mean... I, I they don't it, call it bridging anymore. They call it blast and cruise. And they'll get, people will get confused because the young kids have a whole different lingo. So... Basically, don't okay. stay on lower dosages to bridge between cycles on a cruise. Get off, off. So, hold on. So, because I didn't even know what is bridging before. So, somebody educated me, like, what the hell is bridging? <laughs> also, bridging was, you know, from two cycles, so you, you make a bridge when you have PCT. So, that's cruising now, right? Yeah. So, cruising, cruising would be like if you took a heavy amount of cycle for right now, then you would just come down to like 400 milligrams of testosterone for like eight weeks and then start blasting again after that. Yeah. And so uh, that's what they're suggesting now, like really never coming off. I mean, listen, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, does anybody actually thinks about it? You know, you're just a monkey see, monkey do. And, uh, you know, exactly. yeah, I'm the sheep. I'm going to just follow. Tell me what I need to do. Well, what no. happens is these people get like, they get a following and people look up to them like they're experts. You know, and sometimes these guys don't even compete. They've never competed once in their entire life. And I'm like, well, how are you giving people advice about what to do if you've never competed yourself, let alone competed for any length of time, you know? This is like uh, taking uh, sex advice from the virgin. <laughs> I mean, uh, really, I, I mean, uh, bottom line, and what, you're actually taking his advice? And, you know, I'm serious. Yeah. So uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to say uh, other, other bad things, but, but listen, um, what is that you know of normal amount of weekly testosterone nowadays? Because you read mine from the paper, and, uh, and when I said this, I have never, ever, ever did more than 750, three, three uh, testosterone a week, right? And that was pushing. And when we talk about Troy Aves or Johnny Jackson or Dennis James, my athletes back then, 500. Okay, this is a Jay Cutler. I mean, he speaks openly about it, right? Yeah. He would take 500, he would take you know, some other anabolics, maybe a little bit more on GH, a little bit more stuff like that. But why so much testosterone? Even I think what happens is these guys don't understand, and I understand it because Kevin Lavroni is a really close friend of mine, and he's yeah. actually trained me for a show. We were training together, and I watched his body change like nothing I've ever seen just from training and eating. People don't realize that you guys have genetics that are so far beyond what we can imagine, right? It's like an NBA player. He's seven feet tall. That's genetic. He didn't teach himself to be seven feet tall, 
that even your bodies utilize these drugs great at low dosages. So they take the low dosage. It doesn't do the same thing. So they figure, well, you guys must be on tons of stuff because look at them. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. I watched Kevin naturally when he first did his first comeback, we were in the gym together. He went from like 190 pounds to 240 in a month. Not to, he blew right past us and we were on gear. And that's when it clicked. I said, it's not about how much I take. Cause he was looking at my cycle and he's like, what's this? Well, he didn't even know what the drugs were. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, I can't believe how big he got so fast. He wasn't even eating, eating properly or training. And that's when it dawned on me. I said, it doesn't matter how much I take. I'm never going to do that. I'm not, I'm just not, my genetics are not like that. So they think you guys take way more. That's why they laugh at what you guys put up there. Then they start taking more. And now the average testosterone is a thousand milligrams for like an 18 year old who just starts taking steroids for the first time. I mean, uh, how ridiculous is this? I mean, we all know uh, what is the uh, natural production, 10 milligrams a day, you know, maybe. In a, so uh, this is for a concept. You are 18, 19 years old. Your hormones are boosting, right? And you're going to take a thousand right now. What's going to do? It's going to shut you down 100% guarantee, especially if you do this much for a prolonged period of time. And then, like you said, okay, they're going to go for whatever. All the athletes that come to me uh, to, to work with me first, I ask them, Get, give me your uh, uh, cycles for last two years. Yeah. Okay. I want to I wanna see last two years. You know, don't give me that bullshit now. I'm a, and what I've seen is what you're saying never stopped. It just said yeah. uh, that bridging, like I said, bridging four or 500. Let's say that that should be your cycle, four or 500, not the four uh, uh, cruising, right. uh, what you said. Um, it's unbelievable, yeah. So I've seen the guys that you've worked with, such as Regan Grimes. Like immediately, yeah. there was a difference, right? Yeah. So, what is the difference between the guys now? What they're doing, not just drug wise, but even diet or training wise. Maybe they're not training as hard. I don't know, but it seems to be like when you get a hold of somebody, you transform them very quickly, right? Yeah. And in in essence, like you know, I, I know I've seen Regan's workouts afterwards. Like you do the giant sets, which most people can never handle because they can't they can't fathom how to do that. But it's like, I feel like the training nowadays is kind of like the last thing they think about. And the diet is kind of so-so because I have wham, you can eat like whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And they just take more drugs to try to compensate for the other two. Yeah, things. That, that's the notion. Okay. You, you touched the subject of us going five, six hundred grams of protein before, right? You, yeah. You've seen it. Yeah. That, that's 600 that's out of those papers that I have. It's a 600. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, I had, uh, uh, I posted on Instagram a few times. I had, you know, <laughs> There was a must. I talked to Dennis and uh, Tony Freeman, and they said, like, well, oh, Gunther was saying two days ago, the hardest thing was to eat so much. Uh, yeah, you think uh, I look at that chicken breast and I want to eat it? I mean, the last thing yeah. that I would want to do it, right? But that was the part. This was a must. Now, nowadays, uh, they don't want it. Okay, then everything is over training. You train too much. You know, you do, do you know, High intensity workout. We were training six days a week, twice a day. Okay. And every workout was okay. When I stepped my foot in the gym, you've seen me train uh, Dennis James, Dennis Wolf, Hiretada, whoever was there, Silvio, uh, Joel, I, I don't know, Johnny Jackson, whoever would step in, they knew in the Colosseum gym. That's why it's called Colosseum. You put your foot in, you're a gladiator, and you're fighting for your fight, for your life. This is how it was. This is how, if you're honest to yourself, maximum stimulation of maximum amount of muscle fibers of that muscle that you're training, it takes you know, effort to do that. It's not the machine isolation, visa blower, triceps, <laughs> rope extensions, right? Visa <laughs> blower. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a funny thing I heard from John Bond. But, but seriously, okay, so first, if you're talking, make maximal progress in shortest period of time then you have to really take a notebook and write, okay, how do I maximize training? Okay, so how do I maximize my nutrition? Caloric requirement, timing of macronutrients, okay, can I push it here? You see, even myself initially, that's the notion, you kind of, oh, you're supposed to be low carbs, right? Bodybuilders, right? So back in the 80s, that's how I was approaching. I was way uh, undernourished. I was too afraid to eat enough carbs, right? And I realized, you know, oh, after contest, I can let me uh, have this rebound phase and let me just see what I can get away with, you know, inspect what you expect. I'm watching, I'm not getting it. 
So I increase, increase, increase. And then I realized, oh my God, this is how much I can get away with it. Yeah. Okay, now I can grow and not gain any. I was in shape year around from 91 until 2003, you know, basically. Yeah. And this is what I tried to implement on any of my athletes. I mean, let's face it. I mean, really, which bodybuilder doesn't want to look contest ready year around? Absolutely. We all do. But most of them, okay, they get so fat in the off season. And then they have to crash diet. And then, of course, the they shut down metabolism. They have the cravings. They have the crashes. They're just so fucking hungry. And then they blew up again with yeah. excuse, you know, uh, eat big to, to get big, right? And then that circle repeats. You gain 30, 40 pounds, 50, right? And then you have to lose it. How, how healthy is that? Just that alone, you know, if you look, right? I mean, I, I know guys that gain like uh, 70 pounds after the... I've the done contents. it. I did it. I used to go up to 270. I competed at like 198. <laughs> yeah, but, but see, you were just and you're, you're probably because, okay, you were just so starved after the contest, right? And uh, craving all this nutrient, right? And then you let the dog off the leash, right? Yeah, and, and you're going. And then, you know, you never stop. But yeah. if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay, so uh, again, I'm not trying to be a smart ass and say I'm, I'm better than everyone. No, uh, that uh, piece of paper that you have for me, you mentioned graphs and all that. I was trying to educate my Absolutely. athlete to the point that, okay, you know what you're doing now, right? And listen, my protocol might not be the best. You can improve on this protocol, but these are the bases, right? So training. Maximum stimulation, beautiful. Okay, now maximal nutrition. From a standpoint of macronutrients, enough calories, enough protein, enough energy, good. And now timing, right? And then supplementation can really help. Now we're talking about steroids. Steroids, anabolic androgenic. Okay, so why do we take anabolic steroids? For the androgenity or anabolism? Oh, we are taking for anabolic action. Right. For uh, for to you know build the muscle, not to have that secondary male characteristics you know enhanced. Yeah, this this is not why we started. We were already with enough testosterone, you know. We, we didn't have any male problems, right? So we use anabolic steroid cycles to improve muscle mass, right. to improve strength, and all that stuff. But as you said, people start taking all this testosterone. Why so much testosterone? It was this again. It was these ratios again. People like GH fifteen, again, and, and it did it did come to fruition that GH fifteen and those people that were running that thing were actually selling growth hormone and things like that. They were selling it like on the in the back door, which makes sense why they were promoting use thirty IU stuff like that. What happens? Is they come out and they say stuff like you need a gram of test, you know, a gram of trembolone, and I'm like, look, if you've ever tried real trembolone. 300 milligrams a week is a lot. Like you do not need a gram of just, you know, trying a week. But what happens is these kids read it and there's a lot of stuff on the black market that's fake. So when they get a lot of the stuff, they can take what they perceive as those doches and they're probably getting about a quarter of it. And they're like, oh, I'm doing this. And I'm looking, I'm like, how can you be 150 pounds taking three tablets of Anadrol a day? There's no way. Like at least you would at least gain 30 pounds off the Anadrol alone in four weeks. So, you know, they're not real, but it's like, I think the people that are promoting it are selling the stuff that's underdosed. And then it's like, you know, like the, the young kids grab a hold of it and they go, well, this must be what Milos and those guys were doing because they were so big and they start buying more and more and more of it. And I'm like, look, the drugs that we had back then, these yeah. things were powerful. I tried the real Paralabrons from Negma. They were from France. Yeah. I've used those. I've used the Cycline. I've used all that stuff. Two sustenance a week, 500 milligrams. You put on 25 pounds. Like, That's you it. Up on that, you know? So I think That's between, all you need. Yes. between the underdose drugs and the people that were selling the drugs and the people on the internet, it just spreads like wildfire. And the problem is, and I remember being young, I don't want to listen to the older guys, right? Yeah. The older guys were out of touch with reality and we got all new stuff now. We got science now, like you said, science doesn't cover what we do. So it kind of puts this myth out there that gets pushed by these so-called experts. And I'm like, the experts are the ones like you and the other guys like Kevin and those guys that experimented, even Dan Duchesne, that's where I first learned yeah. stuff was Dan. Dan experimented on himself. He didn't go with science. He, he took everything, he looked terrible, but he took everything himself you know, and found the side effects and combinations and stuff. And these guys have, it's like a combination. Once you find the combination, you don't need to look anymore. But these yeah. people are recreating in the combination, figuring those guys don't know anything. 
And I think that honestly, I think somebody's going to get hurt. I mean, we see Boston Lloyd, he's one of them right off the bat that, you know, I mean, realistically, his life ended early because of things he was doing. He thought that wouldn't hurt him, you know? For, for sure. I mean, uh, listen, I knew uh, you know, the end of China is, it's interesting because I worked with uh, Bill Phillips back in the day. And I remember when I gave Bill Phillips uh, insulin protocol, he immediately sent it to Dan to change to see what you think. And then Dan responded to him, God damn, this might work, right? Uh, so yeah, Dan, Dan was uh, out there. But see, even when, when he, uh, if I can mention this um, insulin, because a lot of people pointing at me, oh, I mean, ruined the sport and all this stuff. Oh, insulin is bad news and all that stuff. Like really? Insulin is the bad news? Anabolic hormone itself, right? If you use it properly, when it can be your best friend, not your worst enemy, right? It can save your better cells from pancreas and it can enhance everything dramatically if you use the potency of transporting nutrients into the cells when it matters, right. okay? I used it pretty much every day from 1993, you know. Uh, okay, I didn't, I, I lie. There was, the, there was the days when when you have to cut down on carbs for certain contests and on those days you, you can't afford them, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, it worked like a space clock, okay? But they, just because they don't know how to use it and then they have uh, assumptions that say it's bad news, you don't use it. Then we talk about uh, GH, right? And then because that idiot, the GH15, whatever, they were selling 30 units a day and whatever, it's ludicrous. Okay. Uh, I tell you this since 30 years ago when I first time I, I, uh, I found uh, somebody that was really a huge expert from Eastern Bloc. Eastern uh, DDR, Eastern Germany, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Russia, right? And uh, this is the first time when I've seen the groups of steroids, right? So DHT, NOR, and uh, a testosterone base, right? And how you combine them and what would matter. In this. And then you add this, you add that, you add that. So GH, even back then, I, I tell you, the uh, recommended uh, top dosage would be for the athletes, 0 0.7 units per kilo per week. So uh, that would be a 100, 100 kilo guy, 220, would use 10 units a day. And that's the like maximum dosage that uh, you, sh you should never cross. Uh, nowadays, uh, I, I, I know people that take 50 units a day, you know, uh, ridiculous. Do they look any I, better from that or do they look worse from no, it? No, no, I, I really. Yeah, but this, Kevin had told me that he used growth hormone for this one show. And he said, no matter what, he couldn't get hard enough. He said, I couldn't get dry. He's like, and I stopped using it at that point. He goes, because my thin, my skin wouldn't thin out. He's like, yeah, I looked like way better in the off season. When it came to the know. show, he goes, I didn't look better on the higher dosages. I mean, so, so he did use the off season and pre-contest. I guess he said he only used a pre-contest like one or two times. Mm -hmm. He said he just didn't mm -hmm. have the right look, but he didn't think that was it. You know, because everybody was mm. talking it up so much. But he said, when I stopped it, he goes, all of a sudden, my skin got, like, shrink-wrapped again. He goes, and I was placing better again after I stopped taking it. So he goes, I stopped taking it. You know, he already yeah. had the mass, you know, but he was just like, it was a look that if you use too much, it gives you a look that's not good. Like, you just don't look muscular and lean. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what's your experience. Uh, of course, I would recommend, if, if somebody would tell me uh, maximization of your condition uh, with or without, I would tell you with, of course, uh, and, and I would top it off into 10 units, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, this is how it is. Uh, it does lean you out, right? It, it is a strong anti-catabolic, you know, it, it can, uh, yeah, make you retain water a little bit, but you, you know, seize this in two, three days. We were stopping GH seven days out, you mm -hmm. know, but even, you know, I pushed uh, what is going to happen with six or five and three and I mean, uh, I did it many guys up like three days before a show. Paul Delat would do it day of the show. And uh, when we talk, yeah, back in the day, with, even with Dorian, he says he always chicken out and he stopped early, but you know, he was, uh, he was thinking that he should have used it all the way through. Yeah, so it's interesting about Kevin. But Kevin did low dosages of everything anyway. Yeah. Uh, to put things in perspective, right? Uh, I'm going to tell you. I, I got the phone call from one of my athletes once a few years, 2006, okay. And uh, he said, Milos, tell me how much testosterone am I using a week? You know, so, I mean, 
what sense does it make that somebody calls you and says, tell me how much I'm using? I said, well, you know, it's a stupid question. You know, then I'll say it, say it. I said 750 a week. But then I heard, you know, a three-way call. I didn't know that was a three-way call. Somebody else, oh, bullshit. I said, what? <laughs> so the, the third guy that was top pro, top, top pro that I later worked with, right? Uh, he says, no, no, no. You know, it's uh, 750 a day. Ooh, that's what so he thought. Three, three sasam on a day. That's what okay? this other guy was taking? Yeah, okay. Because this is understanding. I was like, oh, for the love of God, you know, really. Yeah. So anyway, the, the, the whole idea was, when I finally started working with this guy, I said, you want to tell me that you're going to uh, cut my cycles dramatically and I'm going to grow? I say, yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And you'll see it. And you'll see it within a month, right? And this is exactly reduce his cycles to nothing. I mean, really, uh, if you have a real stuff, you know that uh, 500 milligrams of testosterone is going to do a miracle. You experience yeah. it yourself. 750, okay, that's... You know, Olympia competitor that wants to push the limits, not a milligram more for anybody that is doing it nowadays. And I would probably reduce the session to 500, so maybe I can increase, increase my anabolics a little bit because they want anabolic action rather than androgenic. You know, that's obviously, this is why we take steroids. Uh, but um, your message to the listeners right now would be, uh, how can you and I influence them, you know, to think about and not cruise, not be on a steroids forever, right? Uh, they should know, if especially they are youngsters, you said 18, 19, 20 years old, or Jesus Christ, you know, if you take steroids, for sure, for sure, for sure, negative feedback, your body is going to start producing your testosterone, and yes, you're going to eventually get yourself in trouble. If you did short cycles, moderate, beautiful, you know, you could have maximized the results. Now you have to clean out and possibly what I was doing always, initiate endogenous production as soon as you can with a strong PCT. Yeah. For me, and listen, many of my guys actually improved dramatically during a PCT. And my goal, and you know, that, that was golden rule. When you are off, you have to train just intense, just as intense or uh, harder, okay? And uh, your diet has to be just as strict or stricter, right? And let your endogenous pick up. Listen, when we were doing, and I, I said this to a couple of guys and uh, one that you just mentioned, <laughs> you know, because he didn't feel it before uh, anything about uh, ACG or I say, if you did proper dosage, it's gonna feel like somebody kicked you in the balls. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, this is how it is. And that's what we were doing back in the day, right? You know, very high dosage initial, uh, initial and then, you know, dropping down. But we didn't, I mean, I have never felt any um, trans period. I, I felt completely normal, on or off. There was, you do lose a little bit of that, you know, androgenic, uh, hardness and graininess that look, and that yeah, that, look, yeah. you do but uh, muscle mass wise and uh, body fat it was uh, it was not much difference so yeah like i know you like we're already running over an hour here i don't want to take up too much of your time this is great i've been waiting for so long to get you on this <laughs> to do this and we can do this anytime you know jerry oh, this, this is fantastic man they're like yeah this i love talking shop about the old school stuff but you know um it, it's great to hear you say some of the things that of course i know for a fact but I know people are going to listen when you say it, as opposed to when I say it a lot of times, you know, which it's, it's one of those things where I come from the old school, but because I wasn't a top pro and I wasn't in the Olympia, like you don't know nothing. I'm like, right. But these guys are like close friends of mine that like Kevin has done the cycles for me. He's trained me. Like I know what they do, you know, like I've known Jay Cutler since I was 20 years old. We grew up in the same area, you know? So it's like, I've been around these guys, seeing them and watch how they grow. And I think a lot of people just want to get from zero to hundred like that. They want to go from not training to an Olympian like that. And I'm like, the drugs, when you push the drugs, there is a point where the drugs stop working and you're taking more and more and you're not getting the effect, but you're getting side effects from them. But if yeah. they get off and they clean out, they can stay on the lower dosage. When they go back on, they work better again. You can keep using the smaller dosages by going on and off and slowly building up. You go three steps up, one step back, three steps up, one step back and not ruin your body and not get all the side effects. 
Th this is exactly how it is, but uh, okay. If I'm uh, understanding you correctly, you still are suggesting from a high dosage going to the lower dosage. You know, so, so and this is a trend nowadays, okay? Uh, so let's talk about these newcomers that uh, maybe for the first time they want to do this uh, first time. Okay. And again, this is all for informational purposes only. If, uh, if, uh, yeah, because I'm not, we are not medically qualified <laughs> to, to give any advice. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I, I, I don't like to talk about it because then I'm going to be responsible. Listen, initial cycle, minimal dosages, six to eight weeks would be beautiful for a cycle, right? Six to eight weeks. With a, Minimal dosages, like you said, you you exploded, yeah. you know, with the uh, 500 milligrams of uh, salsa. No, you did 250, then 500. Yeah. You know, yes, that's real life story. S similar to me, similar to any of the the people. Uh, because you, you mentioned Tremblon, I, I just remember because recently I've seen the picture. My first anabolic was Finaject. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And there was uh, there was 50 milliliter bottle. And it was 30 milligrams per milliliter, okay? 30. Yeah. And I was using it three times a week, uh, 30, 30, 30. And like you said, uh, with the uh, 500 milligrams of test and 30 of it, I exploded. I mean, yeah. this was like ridiculous. To the point, every time you come to the gym, every time you pick up, is this, is this the same, you know, 100 pound <laughs> bottle crew? Yeah. Yep. yeah, it's lighter. This is the same. You know, four plates on the spot, and it's nothing. I mean, I can play with it. So, you know, this, this is that doping effect uh, that you even increase. The same. But why would you start with a gram, like you said? They don't, and, they don't understand it, yeah. Why? Okay, and then you already have a suggestion. Don't get off of it. So one gram for a prolonged period of time is going to suppress your testosterone. And for sure, then when you get off of it, you might be in trouble. That's why... Those people, they're going to get you in trouble, going to say, to stay out of trouble, you know, just stay four on 400 and then go back on and then to the rest of your life. What the hell? I mean, well, I'm sorry. But... Lower, if they started with 200 milligrams instead of 1,000, they could go on that, ride it out, and then taper off of that or jump off of that on a PCT. They wouldn't PCT. see a decline very much at all, but their bodies would recover. And after they're done recovering, you could put the 200 back in and it might do the same thing again for a little while. Like you yeah. increase it as your body stops growing, not just keep increasing it because you, you know the numbers are going up and you want to push the numbers. Yeah, and just because you say those influencers or whatever they're doing and they're telling you this, uh, before you consider taking, do a little bit of research and then ask yourself a question. So I, I said it initially, I'm not medically uh, uh, qualified to, to give that advice, but there is no medical doctor on the planet Earth that is qualified to give you the anabolic cycle for sale for a uh, bodybuilding, okay? So bro science is legitimate since 60s and 70s and then 80s. I mean, I do remember meeting my uh, my idol, Frank Zen, uh, beginning of 90, and I just, when I talked to him, right? I said, like, oh, well, you know, I can only imagine if you guys back then did what we're doing now, right? Well, this is what makes you think we didn't. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, right? But uh, all those dosages, you know, like Holy Grail of bodybuilding, Deca, Debol, and uh, Cast, you know, dosages were minimal. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was 500 of uh, uh, Cast plateaued. There was 30 milligrams of Debol. You, well, you know, what's interesting now is the Debol they have now is methanodione. It's not methanostanolone. They don't mm -hmm. actually have the drugs that we had back in the day, which yeah. is what I think is confusing because... There are people I go, I'm on D-ball. I'm like, which one is it? You know, this version. Dion, yeah. it's, not a Dion, it's not the same thing. And like, no, it's D-ball. Right. I'm like, I'm not going to argue. You know, like it, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they put it in the same category. But listen, that Siba, I had it original. Yeah. That it's small little bottle, right? Blue bottle uh, with a white cap. Yeah, but listen, did you, did you see the pamphlet? Do you yeah. remember? Yep. The it's suggested dosage. The suggested dosage is use initially two tablets. And then every eight hours, take another one. So plasma half-life, you started with double, and then within eight hours, it's going to be half of it. So you just replenish it. Four tablets. Yeah. That was uh, 20 milligrams a day. Okay. Well, bodybuilders that I talked to, they did uh, uh, 30 milligrams, right? And they did uh, uh, between two and 300 milligrams of DACA. DACA uh, that you could buy in the pharmacies was 50 milligrams. 
Yeah. You know, this, this is it. You know, so, and uh, anybody in the 70s, and there were great bodybuilders, you know, Doc, Robbie Robinson, Arnold, Lou, Frank, Franco, you know, so, so many, right? Yeah. Those are exceptional bodies. And then here comes 80s from Lee Haney and Bertie Fox and, uh, you know, Barry the May, Rich Gaspari, right? 100% guarantee, you and I right now, we can sign off, guarantee that the dosages that they were using uh, one third of a first time user nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so for those first time users, don't be brainwashed, think about it. And I'm gonna say this again, if used properly, anabolics can enhance your health. I said that many times, I argue with a few doctors, and then later on they concluded, yes, they promote anabolism, constructive metabolism, if you use wisely, because as the medicaments they're given, I, I had a four degree burns, I don't know if you know, in uh, 2000, remember, yeah. Yeah. okay? And instantly, as soon as they come to the burn unit, they gave me oxandrolone, right? And they were giving oxandrolone for every, including uh, little girls, you know, so no realization, no any bad side effects, yeah. In a, and studies that they had was going all the way up to 130 milligrams of wow. oxandrolone. Imagine, yeah. So, yeah. but this was for for highly catabolic uh, injuries, and, and uh, you know, so for the for the people they are, they are considering, keep your endogenous production, be naturally, you know, the the potent and everything else. If you add a little bit to the minimal amounts six to eight weeks maximum first uh, cycle, then get off of it, go on PCT with the ACG and the Clomid, yeah. Start, try, try to be as long as you were on six, eight weeks with the PCT that is three, four weeks, three, four more weeks off, then you can consider the next cycle. And, uh, and uh, that next cycle is where you just said, it could be the same amount that you use first or spit in the ocean a little bit more. Or at that point, you can maybe try to introduce other compound that maybe you didn't experience if you did a primobolon first time and now you want a baldenone second time and you know these kind of things. But uh, uh, as you've seen already now, give me ten different things. Yeah, all at one time. <laughs> yeah, ten different things and and, uh, and let's use the uh, upper dosage. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We got one more question, and this will be to yeah. close it out. So what is you think is the most dangerous steroid, and what do you think is the safest one? I think this could open some eyes, because I think they think that all of these things are just like candy. Like, none of them are going to affect you. None of them are going to hurt you, you know? So, but there's definitely, yeah. like, you know, I think everybody has a different opinion, but I'd like to hear your opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, again, from my experience and uh, uh, my opinion, Oxandrolone would be the, the safest one. Okay. Oxandrolone, I, 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 I would say that. The most dangerous ones, well, it could be meant. <laughs> oh, it could man. be. All right, so I, I've tried, Tony um, Huge came out with a version of mint and he yeah. said to me to try. And I yeah. tried it and my body changed so fast that I had to call him and ask him. I said, look, it feels like I'm on trend and propionate together. He yeah. said, but it's been three days and I look different. He just laughed and said, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look, we used to use the check drops. There was a, you know, that I was in Project Four Record as well. Uh, and, and that time we had to beat the test. And uh, uh, that tetrahydrogastrinone was probably the most important thing I have ever uh, tried ever. That's that clear with Balco Labs use it, right? It, it's, it's ridiculous. But uh, uh, danger. You know, from hepatic standpoint, you know, cardiovascular, you know, I, I, I could say that anything can contribute, but uh, halotestin uh, oh. would be uh, the, the hepatic uh, trouble. That's, uh, I have somebody coming in. Uh, yeah. So, trambolone, you know, it's a, a, again, most of the people, when you ask them what, uh, if it's a one steroid, one steroid only, they can use, they would probably use Tremblon. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I have a now Olympia competitors, right, that cannot handle it. And I actually do the cycles without Tremblon. So 
you know, you have to use uh, uh, whatever else you can. So from that North standpoint, I would give him NPP, right? And they, they can handle it. Well, what do you think, uh, safest uh, yeah. and most dangerous? Me personally, I saw a lot of toxicity with Anadrol 50. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, with like liver toxicity, my liver enzymes would jump up. Of course, we had the ones from, um, it was uh, homogenins from Brazil. You remember yeah. those that had the, the orange backing on them? And yeah, had that one. That would be by Syntax in the little red bottle with the white cap. Syntax, two that's those, the one that's we got it. Yeah, yeah, you put two tabs in your, or even one tab, you put on 20 pounds in a month. Like your nose would bleed while you were benching. Like it was that much like side effects. But for me, honestly, I think that, um, honestly, Tremblone, because I think that's the one that everybody's taking nowadays. They're doing so much of it that I think maybe yeah. lower dosages wouldn't be as harmful, but they're blasting like 700 to 1,000 milligrams a week of Tremblone acetate. They don't even know what Parabolin is. If they took Para with Trend Hex, I'm sure they would take a lot less because it works so unbelievable. But I think the, the tremble on acetate for me I, in the Anadrol, I think together for these guys, the way that they use them, I think it's, again, if somebody using them responsibly, I think that, you know, I don't think they'd be- I, I would tell you, uh, tremble on should uh, be maxed out at, uh, okay, maxed out 400 a week. Uh, 300 would be uh, probably my preference. 400, okay, yeah. And with Anadrol, uh, 75 milligrams maximum, tablet and a half. Yeah. And uh, we were doing this half, 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 25. So I used that uh, Anopolone from Turkey. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. also, you know, but, but that should be a reasonable amount with uh, 500 milligrams of test. If somebody would not grow on uh, 50 or 75 milligrams of Anadrol, three to 400 milligrams of uh, trend and maximum 500 test, you know they're not gonna grow on anything i mean yeah. th th this is a bomb awesome and you guys heard it right here for the first time like from milos who has been the guy who's been helping these guys for years and like i said i've always heard these these people that i know like milos helping with that milos helping nobody's ever said a bad word about you either just so you know that like in private nobody's ever talked bad about you they've always said nice things but they've always said how smart you were and how much you knew about things not just the drugs but the diet too yeah, listen, I mean, uh, my whole idea is if I can make a difference and help somebody, I would, right? Yeah. So when you say they don't have a, uh, you know, anything bad to say, there is nothing bad to say. I mean, it really, it, it kind of maybe sounds weird, right? But uh, I literally would like to help any stranger of the street. You know, this is my, my, my thing. And now if I'm actually experienced and knowledgeable in something, I should share it. Look. Right. I, I published this insulin article back in uh, 93, 94 uh, for Muscle Media 2000. And many That's, people said- You published it, that? I was a prof uh, professional ex. Uh, that was me, so of course. It was, a red, it was a red issue. I think it had Tom Platts on the cover. That's how I learned how to use insulin from that article. Yeah. Nobody yeah, was using it around my area. And I opened it up and I read it and I said, okay, one gram of, 10 grams of carbs for every unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I went, I drove to the drugstore. <laughs> I got the insulin. From that article is where I started experimenting yeah. with those guidelines. Yeah, listen, this, I, I was in the reader contract, so I couldn't use my name. And uh, uh, Bill, okay. Bill Phillips was uh, calling me a professional ex. And uh, this uh, is how it all started. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, uh, so... Many people say, like, oh, if you kept the secret and you did it uh, yourself, maybe you would be Mr. Olympia. I said, like, listen, I was always like this. If you're true sports athletes, let uh, let us have the same tools and, and then let the best man win. Yeah. Uh, every advice I've ever given to anyone is what I would honestly uh, help, uh, helpfully to maintain their health and maximize their progress. This is how it is. When they push the limits and say, you know, I mean, like, how about a little bit more? How about a little bit more? I still like, listen, it's not going to do anything to you. But to learn, if you want to do it, experiment, and then, uh, you know, tell me. And usually, really, uh, I, I get four weeks later, you know what? You're right. I didn't felt a, a zilch difference from 200 or uh, 800. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's interesting. And you just, you're so knowledgeable about it. And I didn't know that you were the one writing in the magazine. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, many, many of those things, are, you know, I, I'm behind it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Milos, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Man, it was great actually being able to talk to you. You're one of the few guys in the industry I haven't met yet. And I'm looking forward. I'm going to head out to the Olympia this year. I'm looking forward to seeing you out there. Um, and I'd love to have you on again, of course, like to talk about. Yeah, of course. People love these old school stories and stuff. So uh, 
I'm 46 yeah, that's... years old, so a lot of my viewers are around my age, so they remember you and all these other guys, and some of the newer guys might not, but I got a feeling some of the stuff we talked about today is going to make its way down to these younger guys. Just from what I put up, I hope title, so. and I think they're going to be they're, they're curious, you know, and then to hear you actually say it like you know, uncensored like that, it's a great thing. I appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, Jerry. Uh, where do you live? I'm in Virginia, Fairfax, Virginia. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'm sure we're going to run into each other in one of those shows, but uh, yeah, we'll do this again when you have uh, any subject. Uh, like I said, uh, yeah, I just need a couple of days. Um, uh, yeah, with our uh, schedule, absolutely. In but... advance yeah, to, to schedule it, yeah. So Thank actually, you. we're going to have to go right now, but uh, it was great seeing you. Hopefully, you. hopefully people were not just listening, but they're going to hear something that we said, right? It's different from listening and hearing, understanding. So please, Absolutely. I, uh, listen to a couple of times. Okay, Jerry. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Yeah.